The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. By rail, by bus, by car, plane or ship, Americans are on the move. It's vacation time. Twelve million of these Americans are policyholders and beneficiaries who own or will benefit by Equitable Society life insurance policies. We like to think that these folks are enjoying extra peace of mind on their holidays thanks to the extra security they have gained through the Equitable Life Assurance Society. To make your own vacation carefree, take care to have all the life insurance protection you need. See your Equitable Society representative. Tonight's FBI file, The Big Build-Up. In many ways, the world of crime is an accurate reflection of the customs and the conditions of the country. For one thing, crime flourishes in economic times like the present, after a war when money is loose. But perhaps the way in which the criminal population has most completely mirrored our civilization is that this, for them, too, has become an age of specialization. A time when one man does one job well. Whatever his field of crime, be it arson, blackmail, or swindling, once he finds a formula that works, he does not deviate. That is true of almost every type of criminal but is especially true of one specific type, the criminal known as the confidence man. Tonight's FBI file opens in a motor court on the outskirts of a large Midwestern city. There, in one of the cabins, confidence man George Thompson is present as his two partners, Mr. and Mrs. Jack Milford, engage in a family fight. George, trying to stop it, speaks. Oh, Gloria, why don't you just relax, honey? This isn't getting us any place. Oh, shut up. But I'm trying Look, to... Look, you're not doing any better than he is. A fine pair of con men. Oh, Gloria, lay off. We've been here five days now, and the only people we've met are bartenders. That's a lie. Sure, we've been at every meeting at that convention since it started. It was your idea to come to the convention, not mine. But you were with us when we heard that this loyal order of Lemrods was loaded with rich guys. I know. And we've been working on them, too. We even learned their secret handshake. Sure, and we got badges that say we're loyal sons of the Lemrod. What more do you want us to do? The convention ends in three days. I want to see some action. Look, we've dropped the wallet five times already. And every time we do, the sucker is either too rich or too honest to go for it. Yeah. Oh, don't con me. There aren't that many honest people in the whole world. Okay, okay, you know it all. You take over. That's just what I intend to do. Come on, let's all get dressed and go into town. I'll find a sucker tonight if it kills me. <laughs> Hey, Gloria, you want to dance? We didn't come here to dance. Oh, I thought we could chase the room better from the floor. I'm looking. If anybody live comes in, I'll see him. Okay, okay. You run it the way you want. Thanks. Only do me one favor, huh? will you? Stop nagging all the time. Hey, what are you staring at? I don't round now, but I think I see our man. Where? The next table right behind you. It's okay now. Take a gander. Oh, yeah. How do you figure him? Well, for one thing, I saw him slip the head waiter a fin when he sat down. Oh, that's Saw him look at the wine card and order a bottle of high-class Fino. Oh. And he's wearing his badge from the Lemros. Yeah, better put yours on. Yeah, okay. Um, how do you think we ought to make them? You just leave that part to me. All right. But don't let this one get away. Good evening, Brother Lemros. Hey, hello, son. I can't quite read your name on that badge in this light, but my name is Milford. <laughs> Glad to meet you. Uh, my name's Sheldon. Uh, this is Mrs. Sheldon. Uh, how, how do you do? do? So nice to meet any of Wilbur's lodge mates. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to meet you, too. 
Uh, oh, Gloria. Yeah? Come here now, will you? And this is Mrs. Melford, Mr. and Mrs. Sheldon, dear. Oh, how do you do? How are you? This is Gloria's first convention, and mine, too. Oh, my, I stopped counting years ago. <laughs> yes, Mother and I have been coming ever since the children grew up. Gives us something to do, you know. <laughs> well, we've certainly had a lot of fun all week. Oh, so have we. Say, I've got an idea. Huh? What's that, son? Why don't we move our tables together and make it one big happy party? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, hold it, everybody. Hold it. What is it? What for? Uh, the girl's going to take another picture of it. Oh. <laughs> now, everybody put on their paper hats. All right. Here you go, Mother. Put this on there. Uh, That's it. Okay, now. Hold it. <laughs> that did it. That Goodness, I haven't had my picture taken this many times in my whole life. <laughs> and you haven't been to this many nightclubs, Mother, either. No, I haven't. Oh, hey, look. Look at Jackie's under the table. Hey, what's the matter? Oh, passed out there? Oh, oh, no, no, no. I didn't pass out. I just felt this with my foot. Oh, what is it? Uh, the wallet. Yeah. And look at this. Oh, it's loaded with cash. And who does it belong to? Oh, I don't know. Well, what do I see here? Oh, here's a card. Uh, George Thompson. But it doesn't say where he lives? No. Hmm. Well, I guess the best thing to do is turn it over to the head waiter. Oh, yes, yes. yes. I think that'd be the honest thing. I yeah. beg your pardon. Did you find that wallet here? Well, yes, I did. Oh, brother, believe me, I'm very grateful to you. Oh, is it yours? Yes. Well, can you identify yourself? Oh, certainly. My name is George Thompson. Oh, right here, I've got my signature on my cigarette lighter. Uh, any signature in the wallet? Yes. I'll write my name here. This should be proof. There. How's that? Oh, it's okay. Here's your wallet, Mr. Thompson. Oh, thank you very much. And, uh, here. I'd, uh, like to give you a reward. Oh, no. I wish you'd take this cash. No, no, thanks. Maybe I'll be that lucky next time I lose something. <laughs> well, uh, do you mind if I do something for you? Oh, you mean like buying us a drink? No, no, I'd like to do more than that. Uh, look. I, uh, hear of a good horse every now and then. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Well, what's that? Well, I was going to give you $200 for returning my wallet, but uh, suppose I just bet it for you on a horse tomorrow and give you the profits. Oh, well, that's all right with me, except that all four of us should be partners on that bet. Uh, okay, Mr. Shelton? Well, I... Uh... Uh, I speak for him, Mr. Milford. We think it's fine. <laughs> Good. Uh, well, uh, where can I get in touch with you people? Well, uh, contact Mr. Sheldon. You folks are at the Central Hotel, aren't you? Yes, it that's is. right. Well, that's fine. I think I'll be contacting you there tomorrow evening with your profits. Meanwhile, in that same city at the local FBI field office, Special Agent Adam Preston is just entering the office of his fellow agent, Jim Taylor. Jim, Mr. Weaver said I was going to work with you. Uh, what's it all about? Well, Adam, we just received a wanted circular from the Chicago office on three swindlers. Mm -hmm. Chicago thinks they're headed this way? Yes, their lead is that the trio was headed here by car. In fact, they should already be here in town now. What's the racket? Well, they've been pulling the old wallet gag and tying it up to another old horse racing swindle. How does that work? Well, the wallet gag is worked when one swindler finds a wallet full of money in front of the victim. The swindler's partner then steps up and claims the wallet. Uh -huh. He offers a reward, which the swindler refuses. Then, in gratitude, he says he'll make a free bet for the swindler and the victim on a sure thing horse. And the horse loses. Oh, no, no, the horse wins. But instead of paying any money, the man with the wallet says he'll bet it back on another horse. I see. Now, that horse wins, too. Well, by now, the swindler and the victim theoretically have a profit of, oh, say, several thousand dollars. What happens then? Then the man with the wallet says he'll give them their profits, but... Before he does, they have to prove that they would have been able to pay that much had they lost. Mm -hmm, I see. And the victim draws his money out of the bank to prove that he could have paid. That's it. Whereupon, Swindler and his confederate take the victim's money and leave. And people fall for that kind of a swindle? <laughs> oh, yes, indeed they do, Adam. Hmm. What do you think ought to be our first step in this case, Jim? Well, let's start a check on every hotel and rooming house in the city. Maybe we can catch them before they build up another victim. <laughs> Can I uh, fix you something to drink, Miss Milford? <laughs> no, thanks. Oh, why don't you try one of those sarsaparilla drinks? Oh, no, thank you. Jack should be here any minute. I just 
hope I'm not inconveniencing you hanging around like this. Well, of course not, child. He uh, said he was seeing that Mr. Thompson, didn't he? Yes, yes, he, he was going to collect our winnings. Uh, how much have we won all together now? Over $4,000. Oh, good oh, heavens. Yes, yes, oh, answer the door, Father. Yes, dear. Hello, Mr. Sheldon. Well, hello, son. Come in. Come in, Miss Sheldon. Hello, dear. Hello, honey. Well, folks, we won again today. Good no. How much? Our total is now twelve thousand oh, dollars. Oh, but that's six thousand dollars a piece. That's right. But there's one small hit. Oh, what is it, son? Well, Mr. Thompson won't give us the twelve thousand unless we show him twelve thousand of our own money. He says he wants to be sure that we could have paid this much if we had lost. Oh. And, and then he'll give us the money? Oh, yes. Well, that, that sounds fair and square to me. Yes, yes, but where am I going to get 12000 to show him? I've only got about $6,000 myself. Oh, well, we can help you there, son. Oh? Why, well, after all, we have partners. Yes, that's uh, right. You put up 6000 and we'll put up the other six. Yes. Oh, swell. Uh, when does Mr. Thompson want to see this money? Well, he said he'd meet us here at the hotel tonight at 9. Uh, up here in this room? Yes. Well, you get your money and I'll go get ours. And we'll all meet back here. <laughs> Jim, I hope you had better luck than I did. Not much, Adam. I went to the clerk at every hotel and rooming house on my list, but none of them recognized any of the pictures. Yeah, same thing happened to me. I did pick up what might be a small lead, though. What's that? I had a hunch they might go to work on some of the people who were in town for the Lemrods convention. And did they? Apparently they did. I checked with the convention chairman, and he said that several members had told him they'd been approached with the old wallet gag. And none of them went for it? Fortunately, no. Chairman said he'd warn the other delegates at the next meeting. Well, that ought to stop them there. Mm-hmm. Then I went over to the city desk at each paper, gave them the story with pictures of the three swindlers. Are they going to print the pictures? Yes, with stories, too, warning the people about the racket. Well, I guess they'll have trouble pulling anything now. I'd still like to nail them, though, before they leave town. What do you think we ought to do? Oh, I received a teletype from the Chicago office just before you came in. About the swindlers? Yeah, it said they just learned the trio had lived in a motor court in one of the suburbs of Chicago. You think they're following the same pattern here? I don't know, Adam, but let's try and find out. Well, I am. Huh? What is that? Before we get to Sheldon's room, let's check up on our routine. What is there to check? Have you got our 6000 Uh-huh. Right here in my purse. You know the procedure? Yeah. I flash our money first. Right. Well, here's their own. Um, hey, what, what time to tell George to get here? In ten minutes. Oh, Good evening. Oh, hello, Mr. Sheldon. You come in, both of you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Sheldon. Hello, hello, Mr. Sheldon. Hello, how are you, Mr. Yeah, no sign of Mr. Thompson yet. Well, he's not due for another ten minutes. Uh, did you get your money? Yes, sir. Six thousand? Right. Uh, did you bring your money? Uh-huh. Uh, here it is. Oh, goodness, all those bills. Well, there's our half, folks. Could we see yours? Oh, oh, surely. Uh, show it to the mother. Very well, there you are. What? Well, a gun. That's right. Hey, what is this? My dear boy, you didn't think we were going to fall for that old racetrack swindle, did you? Oh, huh? Mom's right. I'd advise you to get yourselves a new racket. Either that or pick your suckers more carefully. Jack, do something. Don't yeah. move, son. I can use this if I have to. Father, pick up their money. Yes, mother. Yeah. Let me have it, my dear. No. Now, keep away. Dear girl, please remember this gun. Gloria, give him the dough. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Well, what happens now? We're just going to put you both in the closet and leave. What? But first, I have some advice for you. Well? For the sake of our profession, please go into some legitimate work. <laughs> We will return in just a moment to tonight's case from the files of your FBI. Tom, how would you like to meet a professional worry lifter? Professional worry lifter? Well, that's a new one on me. Well, a professional worry lifter is a man whose business it is to make other people's worries vanish. For instance, an amateur worry lifter may give you plenty of sympathy and nothing else. A professional worry lifter really does something about it. Actually worked hard to make your worries disappear. Say, he must be a popular man. He's your equitable society representative. 
And if you are haunted by thoughts of what might happen to your family, if you were no longer there to take care of them, let me suggest that you see an equitable man right away. You'll find he doesn't miss a single trick. His plan will include everything, even readjustment income. Readjustment income? What's that? The Equitable Society's readjustment income plan provides extra income for the widow during the two toughest years, the two years immediately following her husband's death, years in which she is adjusting the family way of life to a lowered income. You know, expenses can't be reduced overnight. It takes time. And that's why every life insurance program should provide readjustment income for extra help during the two toughest years. Sounds like a mighty good idea. Does it cost an awful lot? Why, it may not cost you a cent. It may require only a simple rearranging of your present life insurance program. In any event, the man to see is your professional worry lifter, your Equitable Society representative. Look in the phone book for the Equitable Life Assurance Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Big Build-Up. Statistics are available on almost every field of crime. You can learn how many murders there were in any period, or the number of armed robberies, or the value of every stolen automobile. But in one field of crime, the figures are inaccurate, and that field is swindling. The figures are inaccurate here because in many cases, the victims prefer to take his loss and not admit that he has been duped. It is safe to say, however that the American public every year is swindled out of millions and millions of dollars. That was true last year, and it'll be true this year. There's one way, and only one way, in which you can protect yourself. In doing business with strangers, don't expect to get something for nothing. Tonight's FBI file continues in the hotel room of the Sheldons. Gloria and Jack Milford are still locked in the closet... Well, Jack is trying to break down the door. We must have built this closet as an air raid shelter. This is a good time for jokes. Well, I'm tired. I've been banging away at that door now for ten minutes. What do you want? Sympathy? No, no. Just be your usual charming self. Hmm. If you think it's so easy, take a crack at it yourself. Uh, not me. You got us in here. I did. Who picked out the sucker? Remember? Well, if you hadn't been so stupid, you'd have recognized them. Oh, get back. I'm going to try this again. <clears throat> Oh, there, now I can reach out and unlock the door. There. Come on. Hey, they're gone. Naturally. Did you think they'd wait for us? Oh, shut up. Well, where do you think they went? How do I know? They didn't tell me. Oh, that must be George. I'll get it. Okay. Come in, come in. Uh, what's been going on in We here? got stuck up. Stuck up? Who did it? Our two suckers. Huh? We asked to see their dough, and they asked to see ours first. When Gloria flashed it, the old lady came out with a Betsy. Oh, that's great. Well, there's only one thing to do. Let's try to find him and get our dough back. Okay, well, let's split up. I'll see what I can find out here at the hotel, and I'll meet you at the Crystal Bar in an hour. Mother? Yes, dear? What's that you're working on? Some embroidery. It's a pillow. Pillow? With writing on it? Of course, it's a souvenir pillow. Giving it to Cousin Kathy for a wedding present. Oh. Uh, what's it say on the pillow? The motto. Honesty is the best policy. Ah, that's very nice. Mm-hmm. What time is this train due in Cleveland, Father? I, uh, about an hour now. What kind of a convention are we attending? Undertakers. Well, that sounds very enjoyable. Never contacted undertakers before. I know, Mother. Change will do us good. <laughs> huh? <laughs> What's the joke? I'm just thinking about those youngsters and their racetrack swindle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were very, very cruel. I know. But, Father, they do make it hard for the rest of us. 
The way they work, they'd make anyone suspicious. Yeah, they make people honest, too. Oh, heavens, don't say that. People are getting more honest right along as it is. <laughs> no, no, Mother. Don't start talking yourself into one of those moods. Just remember this. If there's someone dishonest around, we'll find them. Where have you been, Jim? Looking at tourist cabins. I located the place where our swindling trio was staying. Was staying? Yeah, they checked out several hours ago. I searched the cabin, though. Did you find anything? Yes, this picture here. It's taken at the 907 Club. Hmm. That's Milford and his wife, all right. Now, I also know that old couple that's with him. You do? Who are they? Well, that's what I've been trying to think of. I came back here to check their picture against the files. I have a strong hunch they're wanted, too. Are they also swindlers? I think so, Adam, mm. yes. You think they might have all been working together? No, that's pretty hard to tell. Did you get any lead on where the gang had gone? Well, the manager of the outer court said that Milford made a phone call from his office. Did he know who he called? Yes, it was a central hotel, but he wasn't sure who he talked to at the hotel. No idea at all. Well, he didn't remember for sure. He said it might have been Shelburne... She... Wait, I remember now who that old couple is. That's Mom and Pop Sheldon. Then they must be the ones at the Central Hotel. That's right. Let's get over there right now. Look, if Jack doesn't show up here in a few minutes... Here he comes now. Well, I didn't get much, but I got something. Yeah, what's Uh that? Well, nobody at the hotel knew where the Sheldons went, but I picked up some information from the bartender here. Uh Oh. Well, don't keep it a secret. We got taken by two of the slickest con merchants in the business. Huh? Mom and Pop Sheldon. Oh, yeah, I've heard of them. I give the bell captain at the hotel a double saw, and I got to call him later to see if they come back for their bags. Well, what do they want with their bags? They got our six Gs. Uh, hey, isn't the bartender waving to you? Yeah, I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, the Sheldon, huh? Well, honey... You really picked a couple of daisies when you took over. Oh, let's not go into that again. Uh, you weren't satisfied to let me and Jack run things. Well, what do you want me to do, kill myself? All right, so we got outsmarted. Next time we'll know better. Yeah, there might not be a next time unless we get our six Gs back. I think I got it. I got what? I told the bartender there was 50 in it for him if he could find out where the Sheldons went. Yeah, did he know? No, but they were in here drinking last night, and the other bartender served them. Oh, when did they come to work? Well, we don't have to wait. This guy called him at home. Oh. And he remembered hearing them say that their next stop was Cleveland. Well, what are we waiting for? <laughs> Adam, over here. Jim. Hmm? Sheldon's have skipped without paying the hotel bill. Well, did you find anything in the room? Not a thing except the smash closet door. You think there was a fight? No, hardly. The Sheldon's are too old to fight. My guess is they locked someone in that closet and then left. Could it have been the Milfords? Could have been. The elevator boy remembers taking them up there. He identified them from the pictures I showed him. It sounds like everybody was double-crossing everybody else. Oh, why? Well, the desk clerk looked at the pictures and said that Milford was here looking for the Sheldon. Trying to find out where they went? Yes. Well, that is right. Mm-hmm. But I think there's one thing we can be sure of, Adam. What's that? If we can find the Sheldons, we've got a good chance to grab all of them. Yes, but there's not a single lead on where the Sheldons went when they left here. Oh, there's only one. What's that? The bell captain told me that during the week, old man Sheldon sent him out to buy a book on embalming. On embalming? Yeah. Well, what would he want that for? From the record, the Sheldons don't get mixed up in any murders. I know. Their record shows that the. Hey, wait a minute. I've got a hunch. Let's get to that out-of-town newspaper stand. I think we might find out where the Sheldons have gone. Mother, pass me the butter, please. Surely. Here you are. Thank you, dear. This is a wonderful idea, having dinner served in the room. Yes, it gives us a chance to rest. You know, every time I walk into a hotel dining room, it's like work. Always looking for a prospect. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. (laughs) This ought to be a wonderful convention. Yes. There are a lot of rich undertakers. Mm -hmm. Here's some more coffee, dear. No, thank you. When I get a good night's sleep. (laughs) Convention opens at nine tomorrow morning, you know. Yes, I I must be the waiter coming back to the table. Yeah, are you all finished, dear? Yes, let him in. All right. Hello, Mr. Sheldon. What? Mr. Milford. That's right. Back up and let us in. Father, what? who's that? It's us, Mrs. Sheldon. Oh. George, keep that gun on him. Right. Now, don't move either one of you. We've got the gun this time. Now, right now, where's the dough? We haven't got it. We, we put it in the bank. You're lying. We, look. 
We've never killed anybody before, but we wouldn't mind starting on you. So get it up. Uh, all right. It's in that wallet, inside pocket of my coat. Oh, Father. There's one on that chair. Get it, Gloria. Okay. It better be all there, too. It is. So you took us for chumps, huh? You were very clumsy. Is it all there, Gloria? Yeah. Looks like more than we gave him. Oh, that's fine. Who's that? That's the man from room service for the table. Okay. George, open the door and let him in. All right. But remember, you two, don't get out of line. That gun kills waiters, too. Drop the guns on some. Huh? Go and drop it. Adam, see if any of the others have guns on them. Right. Well, who are you? Special agents of the FBI. Goodness. Now, you're all coming along with us. All five swindlers were tried and convicted for violating the National Stolen Property Act and sentenced to long prison terms in a federal penitentiary. And thus, five criminals engaged in confidence games were removed to a place where they will not be able to swindle anyone for quite a while. Now, this case in the files of your FBI was closed because a special agent, hearing that a confidence man had bought a book on embalming, remembered that the confidence man always worked conventions. A study of out-of-town newspapers showed that there was to be a convention of undertakers in nearby Cleveland. Putting those two pieces of information together closed the case. And once more protected you, the American people, from a criminal enemy. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Mr. Keating... I've been thinking about that Equitable Society Readjustment Income Plan. And the more I think, the better I like the idea of fixing it so my wife would have extra income during those first two years. That's right, Tom. That extra cash every month for two years would give her time to adjust her expenses to a new standard of living. Okay, I'm sold. Then let me suggest that you get in touch with your Equitable Society representative without delay. Let him show you how little it costs to provide your wife with Equitable Readjustment Income. Call your equitable representative soon. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Ambitious Widow. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry Lewis, your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Ambitious Widow on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.